Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to have a look at um, a sample for Turbo 360, where we're going to use the Business Activity Monitoring module to create a self-service UI where we can query data from logs in Azure Data Explorer. So if we have a look at what this looks like, you can see I've got a number of different applications over here that could be written in different languages. And what they're doing is they stream telemetry events to an event hub. So imagine my maybe my C sharp application's got some kind of login framework. We push messages to event hub, and then with ADX we've got the data capture features where data from the event hub will be ingested into the ADX instance. Now that's really good because it gives us an easy way to get data into a database that we can easily query using KQL. But the problem is we want to create an easy way for our business users and support users who aren't Azure experts to be able to query this data in a user-friendly manner. So here our developer can use Turbo 360 and they would input some KQL queries and we can then build a like a visualization and a model for how we're going to query this data so we can then expose it to users and then up here we've got our support user and our business user and they can just come into Turbo 360 and with a nice friendly UI they'll be able to leverage the data we've captured in our logs. So let's have a look at um, what this looks like. So I've got a I've got an event hub. Um, I've got the ADX already set up and here just to simulate some test data I've created a logic app and I'm basically using the event hub shape here. So you can see I've got a shape to start a transaction, a shape to complete one. And here in the message content, I can kind of pass through pretty much anything I want. But here I've got um, some data and then some metadata. So I've passed in a few different fields. I can really customize these fields to be anything that I want. And then over in ADX, we've got um, the data store here. So I've got my custom login database with my custom BAM table. And then here you can see I've just queried that table at the minute. And you can see I've got some JSON data already in here. I get some extra properties from the event hub as well. So my data is there in, in ADX ready to query. I just need to now create the visualization on top. So if I go to table 360 here. So if we start by having a look at what we can do once we've got this data visualized. So you can see here I've run a query for the last seven days and I've got some really simple data coming through. So I've got a, a list of customers and order IDs and I can also specify things like the workflow and the run ID. These are logic app properties that I've made go into the log messages. So I can do things like in the query, I can do an easy search for specific customers, specific orders. And I can create this grid to look like what I need it to look like for any given scenario. So if you imagine on the tree view here, we've got different departments, different business processes and different transactions. And I can create the grid that matches what my users need to be able to check what's going on. Now, what I can do next is if I find the transaction I'm looking for here, I can click on it. And Turbo 360 is going to then execute some additional queries against ADX. And here you can see I've got some stages. So for the, each stage, we've got started and completed, which kind of mapped back to back to my logic app here. If we saw these, these two events we passed from the event hub. And what I can do is I can say view stage. And then I've just promoted out some of the properties. So this is most of the properties that were on the... Um, the message that hit the event hub so you've got the stage the transaction i've even got those properties that the event hub pushed in i, I can pull out as well now if i want to correlate back to the logic app you can see i've got things like the workflow name the run id i can craft if you if you look at some of the advanced options here i can craft for example a clickable url where i could jump out to the logic app or to maybe something like a function um function instance that we can look at the, um, the transaction history from app insights or something like that um, so that would be the basic um, track and trace type features so i can see my transactions click on them see more detail i can articulate errors into here so maybe some of these shapes 
might be in a failure state if they haven't completed successfully and I can derive that from my logs. I can then go and create a dashboard here. So a good example with my dashboard is I can put my own um, my own widgets on here so I can have either a raw query against maybe ADX and I can put my own custom KQL in here. So if I use my log database, I pop my query in and create a widget from that. Or I can use the transactions that we're going to come on to in a moment. So you can see I'd have the, the default one here, for example. And I can just build out a dashboard with what I need. So I've got a very simple widget showing how many transactions per day. Um, but I can make, you know, make this dashboard really do kind of whatever I want. And then... We have the monitoring where we can create queries here. So what I could maybe do is create my own query from the transactions. Um, say, you know, maybe I want to get no errors in the last 15 minutes. So I could put that as a query. I could drive them, um, you know, so maybe I said, um, you know, something like in the query, I could say if the state equals failed, we'd get a result coming back. And I could maybe say if there's more than one raise a warning, if there's more than five raise an error, and I could put a note for the support person to tell them what the problem was and what they should do about it. And then I can basically add, you know, maybe four or five queries for different conditions here, and we can raise alerts from there. So at that point, we've created some nice, useful, easy to use functionality for my users to look at this business process. And the next thing we have is the question of, well, what about the developer? So if you remember on the diagram, if we look here, we had this, um, this developer over here who needed to create this business process. So how do, how do they actually do that? So over here, you would start by adding a transaction. You would then choose Azure Data Explorer. That would then query which um, data explorers you've got available. So I've got my data ADX here choose a database and then really I've got the concept of a parent query and multiple child queries so I'll put my query in here I'm just going to go and edit the existing one to show you so I could create a query um, this query I've, I've looked for some start events and end events and then I basically just do a join between the tables and project out the columns I want to be available and then once I've done that, I'd execute the query, and then I would just do some mappings here. So I've said, you know, that the instance ID for the transaction might be the run ID. I can have things like start and end times. I can promote properties. So here I'm promoting two fields that I would use in the child queries to be able to look for matching records. And then down at the bottom here, the status, as you can see, we map the failure status and the success status, and they get mapped from one of the um, fields that comes back in the query. So you can see we've got a field called transaction status, and we map that to the Turbo 360 statuses, so they'll light up as green, yellow, or red. Now, once I've got my parent query, I then have the option to add child queries. So these would be individual shapes, so I can go and add a shape here, I can choose the data source for it. So you don't always have to use the same data source that you used for the parent. So if I pick ADX again, so I choose my database and then I could add my query in here. And again, if we look at the existing query that I've got, you'll see I'm just looking up in that table for a record where the transaction instance ID matches the, the one I passed from the parent. So that's where we pass this parameter in. And then I'm looking for a stage called started, which will find a row in my ADX table. And then I'll be able to project out some columns with the extend section here. So I can create the columns I want to show for this particular, um, particular record. And then we just basically do the mappings again. So we've mapped the statuses down the bottom. And really that's how simple it is. So I'll, I'll execute this once for each of the stages I want to put in. So a lot of the times there might be two, three, four stages you show to a user just to give them a high level of what's going on. And then we can just take those logs you've created and get so much more value from them because they're no longer buried away in the ADX database that nobody sees. We've got this really easy to use UI 
where you can give different users can access to different business processes in different departments potentially and they could very easily use this tracking functionality to be able to search for um, transactions and then act upon them so hopefully um, this video is a quick introduction to show you how easy it would be to get up and running if you're using ADX and a custom login scenario maybe using something like an event hub to ingest data into ADX from a custom application. Um, thank you for listening to today's video.